Yeah, so 17 in school, I was a class clown, very disruptive, just always getting kicked out of class and stuff. And you like tried just, to sell your school on to, eBay at one eBay point? eBay my school, just, I mean, I grew up in foster care and had all these challenges, and so one of the ways that I dealt with that when I became a teenager was just being rebellious, and I realized I was kind of funny and could make people laugh, and it's like, okay, like, that's the way I'll make friends, that's the way I'll get dates, but that's also the way I'll get in trouble. And so this teacher one day, she sort of bribes me and she says, Josh, you know, if you shut up during class, I'll let you MC the pep rally. And this is just like epic to me because it's like normally my audience is like 20 people in a classroom. Like this is like the whole freaking school. This is so cool. And so I, it's interesting how one of the things I say is it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And she, that was sort of that bribe. That was sort of her marketing to me of like, I know this kid would love to be able to stand up in front of his peers and speak. So I'm going to sort of bribe him with that. I'm going to sort of hook him with that. And so I did that and it went really well. And then she sat me down and she said this to me. And Wait, go back to the pep rally. What oh, did you tell these people? What did you tell the kids? I honestly have no idea. I don't remember. It was just it was just sort of like this blur to me. I think I just made some jokes. But was it an aha moment being up there in front of a group? Do you think that's kind of where it all started? For sure. I, I mean, I was unbelievably frightened. Like, unbelievably frightened. Like, do you want to do this? Absolutely. Yes, yes. Okay, well here's a chance. Oh crap! Oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> say why? yes and figure it out later. Right, but why did why did I want to do? Why should why no? Why did I say yes? Oh, I'm scared. I don't want. I they they won't listen to me. I won't be good at this. And like I even have those feelings today. Like I'm very good at what I do, and I'm confident I can go into any high school in America in an auditorium and just bring the heat. But every time before I go, I am like scared out of my mind, and I'm like, why am I doing what? No, why didn't I do something different? But I think that's something that's important to realize is that that's okay and to me if you're nervous it means that you care and like I do care and I do want to do well so there's still a bit of that um, nervousness you know I don't think practice makes improvement I think practice makes perfect so do the pep rally it goes well like the feedback is there and it's I mean it's not as well as I could do now but it was it was raw and good and then the teacher sits me down sort of like this epic moment he says, you know, Josh, when you make your friends laugh, they're listening to you. Now what will you say? And it was like, that's an awesome lesson. It was unreal. Wow. And it re you know, and she's probably said that to me like 10 times before. But it was at that moment I was ready to listen to it. Right. Because it was as if she had like, you know, alcohol swabbed me. And like now I was ready. Right. It was like I, w I could actually listen to that because she's mm. probably literally said it. A bazillion times before, but oh, whatever. You know. But that's the biggest lesson in marketing. We just learned that. I know David Crabtree here, one of the newscasters, said, if you think you get your message out once, people heard it, no, you have to say it over and over. That yep. teacher yep. was your marketing message that she yep. said over and over until yep. you finally received it. Right, yeah, I guess you never know when someone's ready to hear your message, and so you just need to constantly, I mean, not over constantly in an annoying way, but you just need to constantly be putting it out there. And again, if it matches who you are and you're authentic, like, people aren't going to be annoyed by it. It's like, yeah, well, that's just that's what this guy does. Like, you know, Josh Ship equals this. You know, Alicia equals this. It's just what they talk about. This was the first time I realized that being a class clown, getting someone to laugh, then, then I have an opportunity, right? I can distract them more, or I could say something that challenges them and something, you know, maybe to think about their life. And even today, it's like I just sort of bounce back and forth between those two. Because I think if you're anyone that deals with young adults in any way, teenagers, college students, one of the best ways to get them to open up and be susceptible to your message is to get them laughing, right? Because it's, it's, it's disarming, you know, you sort of lean back, you're more open to the message. And I think this doesn't just apply in a speech, but I think even in your marketing, you know, not always taking yourself so seriously and not always thinking like everything has to be perfect. But just being real, being legit, you know, letting um, mistakes be there. Like, it's okay if you say, uh, or, mm, or any of that stuff. Like, I, I just think people don't relate to machines. They relate to humans, to human beings. And, like, anyone that's out there that I really respect, that I think is interesting and doing interesting stuff, they're just authentic. That is, that is probably the, other than they're successful, that is the only through line I can define, is that they're just authentic. I they're think that, that is so, it's such a, a, an awesome thing. But they haven't been authentic their whole life. Because I, I went through a period like I was talking to you about off camera, suit and tie, I need to stand a certain way, I shouldn't say crap, oh my gosh, that would offend somebody. Um, but you weren't finding success like you are now either. No. The thing, but here's an interesting point, is that when I was this chameleon, this other person, I didn't, never had roaring fans. I never had anyone say, that was amazing. It was like, yeah, that was fine. But I also never had criticism. 
once I fully embraced who I am, I'm like, you know, I'm going to dress how I'm going to dress if I was hanging out with my friends. I'm going to talk to them as if they're my friends. Right. Right? I'm not going to talk down to them. I'm going to talk to them like they're 20. Because any 15-year-old looks up to a 20-year-old, not a 10-year-old. Right? I'm not going to be Barney for teenagers. But when I did that, like 90% of people like loved it and was like, this is unbelievable. But then 10% would give me crap. Oh, you should, you know, you're, you're in a school. You should be, you should be wearing a suit. Oh, I can't believe you said you play with your Wii. Calm down, woman. It's a Nintendo. You know, it's like, I think once you're authentic, like, some people will give I you... I missed that joke earlier. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry you did. Beautiful. <laughs> like, some people will give you crap, but I think I think that's worth it. I think that's fine. It's the whole thing you're talking about with your email list. It's like, it's better to have 100 people that, like, totally get you than 1,000. They're like, mm, whatever. Exactly. And some of those people that give you the criticism or that, that constructively like tell you, or even in your face in an email are like, man, I totally hate you. What your, your message sucks and you do it in a really wrong, rotten way. I think those people even make you better as well. And Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, he embraces those people too. And I used to watch him and he'd go, you know what, if you hate this show, like write to me and tell me that the show sucks. And I thought that was so cool because it was the first time I realized that it's okay to be raw, make mistakes and not please everybody.